Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be discussing and introducing the idea of asymptotic notation, why it's helpful, and a bit of the basic properties behind it. To understand why we need this, we have a little code snippet up there that we're going to be discussing and trying to figure out how long does it take for that code snippet to run. For this particular code snippet, if you knew your code ahead of time, what you could likely do is just time it yourself. Most programming languages have some sort of built-in timing feature, and you could use that timing feature to determine how long this code would take. The problem occurs when you know your code might possibly be running on several different devices with different hardware or different other processes running in the background. With all of that in mind, you might want to develop a more sophisticated way of talking about how long does the code take. One idea that might pop into your head is I could look at this code and say, what is it doing? It's doing a couple of loops, and then it's doing some arithmetic inside of those loops. And in most hardware, things like addition and subtraction and assignment, like is being done here, can be done in the same amount of time every single time if you, the sizes of those objects are consistent. So maybe we say, eh, that line, line three, it, maybe that takes constant time. Maybe we, maybe we don't know what that constant is. It may depend on the hardware, so we'll just call it C. We're then going to try to figure out, well, how many times does that line execute? Lines two through four here, those lines execute seven N plus three times. But that's not quite right. I've already lied to you. Those execute seven N plus three times for every single value of I. So what we actually need to do is figure out how many times does that outer loop also run. So we might also need to figure out how long does this take? And if you remember back from Foundations 1, you have seen that we can figure out the number of times by taking the top bound, 3n squared plus 4n, subtracting the bottom bound, and adding 1. That is the number of times that that code would execute. To figure out in aggregate, using both of the loops that are nested together, how long would this take? It's going to be the number of times for the outer loop times the number of times for the inner loop. So, the total number of times, the run time, is something like 3n squared plus 4n minus n, that gives me a plus 3n, plus 1, times 7n plus 3. That is the number of iterations of line 3. What is the cost? That would be the number of iterations times the cost of running that line that many times. So that is a runtime there. And that is a accurate runtime, but it can be hard to compare algorithms if we were always so bogged down in the details. What we want to say is that this is something like the most important term. The most important term would be the one that grows the quickest. So we want to say, meh, that's something like cn cubed. That's not really a good notation because we don't have a good sense of what does it mean to say, eh, kind of like. So what we're going to say instead is that this runtime is in theta of n cubed. We'll discuss what that notation means later, but let's discuss intuitively what we mean by this. So, we're going to make a little plot down here. I'm going to plot something here in blue that is the actual runtime of some made-up algorithm. Let's say it looks something like that. It's a bit messy, it's a bit ugly. And it's not necessarily uh, easy to understand with the shape that it has. So this is my runtime of algorithm. What might happen in what we might want to study instead is some mu much more convenient looking function, some function like let's say this nice smooth red curve. And our goal is that that red curve and the blue curve, in some sense, grow at the same rate. What do we mean by the same rate? Well, then we're going to have to 
muddle through a bit of mathematics to get there. 